All content is publicly sourced and used under the USA Fair Use and UK Fair Dealing Guidelines. The things I say are strictly my opinion. Good afternoon. Well, almost evening, everyone. It's the Busy Bee with the Royal Tea. I hope you've all had a great Friday, July the 17th. It was kind of a hectic day for me. I get tired of dealing with people's foolishness, everybody. I sure do. Is it any wonder that in my spare time at work I've been applying for other jobs? Certainly not. Oof, I tell you what. Crazy, crazy. For today's History Minute, we have Isabella of France, Queen Consort of Edward II. This is a miniature by an artist. You see the name there. I don't want to mispronounce anything. Her royal coat of arms. A few facts about Isabella. Tenure as Queen Consort from 1308 to 1327. She was notable for her diplomatic skills, intelligence, and beauty. Kind of like me, I would say. Hmm. She is usually portrayed as beautiful, but cruel, manipulative, but a cruel and manipulative figure. Well, minus the beauty, and that sounds like someone we all know. Not myself, but someone else. I'm sure you know what I mean. She and her alleged lover hatched a plan, and she succeeded in deposing her husband, and she became regent on behalf of her son, Edward III. Some believe that Isabella arranged the death of her husband, Edward II. She became a nun before she died on the 22nd of August, 1358, at Hertford Castle. She was 62 or 63 years old. She's buried at Greyfriars Church in Newgate. Thank you. So this is Edward, I, I just wanted to share this with you. He fell asleep last night on his back, and he still has his his toy hanging out of his mouth. I thought it was just <laughs> cute. Before I jump into the story, and boy do I have a story for you all today. It It's so interesting. I saw it, and I thought, I have to share this with everyone. Someone from David Cameron's uh, former government did a study about the Harkles, and it turns out that they are huge hypocrites, huge hypocrites when it comes to the environment. He went through, they use, I, I believe they have a bigger carbon footprint than the, the average Briton, 10 times more. Uh, I'll read you the story, you'll see, but we all know they're hypocrites, but this story s s exposes the hypocrisy, and this person actually did a study. He was a former official from the government. I'll get into it in just a moment. Before I do, though, I want to share with you the most interesting parts from Chapter 3, Part 1 of Lady C's book. Now, this part covers Megan from the time she graduated college, Northwestern in Illinois, till she met Harry. And it was the information that we already knew, basically. But there were three things that I wanted to share with you all that I thought were interesting, because I don't want to do a whole video about it. It's just not really enough to do a video about, in my opinion. The first one was the wedding gift bag. When she married Trevor in Jamaica, she gave everyone a that attended the wedding a gift bag. The gift bag had the word shh written on it. You know, S-H-H, -H, like, uh, shh, be quiet. That shh kind of, yeah. So inside of it, she didn't tell anyone what was inside the bag, but she placed inside each one a Scooby snack. And some people took it home with them without looking inside, inside to see what it was. And after they'd gotten home, they did, and they realized what she put in there. And they couldn't believe that they'd gone across, uh, you know, uh, an international border with such nonsense. Ridiculous. Thank you, Megan. The second thing, the wedding ring, this story's older than my grandmother's hip, everybody. We all know about this one. She was in Toronto. Trevor was back in L.A., or I believe it, his office might have been in New York. He was there then. Uh, she, There was no sign of trouble in the relationship, everybody. No sign of trouble, but she mailed the wedding ring back to him. Hey, it's over. There you go. And the last thing, the pasta dish. Now, this is when she was with Corey Vitiello, I believe is how you say his name. She got with him maybe as she was breaking up with Trevor, or possibly... After, she says it's after, but 
that's her version, so who knows. But this guy was the hottest chef in Toronto. He was he was hot stuff. She spotted him in his restaurant. She knew he was the talk of the town. She set it, her eyes on him. She had to have him. She got him. They were having a dinner party one night. All their friends were over. He created a recipe, some kind of pasta dish. Everyone at the dinner party was commenting on how they loved the pasta dish. And it was his recipe. He's the chef his recipe. So, instead of allowing him to take credit, Megan jumped up, it's mine, you know, thank you, thank you, and she basically took full credit for it. And th They had been having problems in the relationship, and that was the straw that broke the camel's back, so to speak, for him. And that, that was the most interesting. I'll read the rest of that. I believe it covers Harry up until the time he met Megan for me when he graduated Sandhurst. I'm not sure. I haven't really looked at it, but any interesting points I'll share with you all. So the story about this government study, this government official study, it's from Newsweek. I'll link it below. It's titled, Report Tells Meghan and Prince Harry to Cut the Foolishness on Their Green Credentials. Harry and Meghan Markle's car carbon footprint may be 26 times higher than the average Briton, according to a re to research by a former government minister. Norman Baker's claims estimated the Duke and Duchess of Sussex took at least 53 international flights, including 18 on private jets, in the 12 months up to 2020 January. The 12 months up to January of this year? So that would mean all of 2019. Well, everybody, I googled Meghan Markle commercial flight 2019 and I looked on the images I was not able to find one of Megan but I did find this of Harry same flight I believe yes the blue magazine behind the seat so no pictures of Megan taking a commercial flight in 2019 but one of Harry just one and 53 and only 18 were on private jets. The difference between 53 and 18, that would be 35. You're telling me that the former Duke and Duchess of Sussex took 35 commercial flights in 2019, but only 18 private jet flights? I, I don't buy that for a moment. That can't be true. Let's move on. The former transport minister and David Cameron's coalition government, that's what he was, he was the transport minister in David Cameron's government, he said the overseas trips would create 215 tons of carbon over the year, 26 times higher than the UK average of 8.3 tons. Oh my goodness, at the beginning of this, I was wrong. I said that it was 10 times higher, but it's 26 times higher. Can you believe that? Their carbon footprint, the eco-warrior, hypocrite preacher of Sussex's eco-footprint, is 26 times higher than the average UK person's. Absolutely ridiculous. The Duke of Sussex last month said we are living through an extinction crisis and have perhaps a decade to course correct before we lock in our fate. In a report for The Sun, Baker said the only thing green about Harry are his wellies. The self-appointed eco-warrior who likes to lecture everybody else on climate change is in the top 1% of people on the planet for carbon emissions. The top 1%. Do you remember a few years ago in the USA, they were having the top 1% protests and 99% protests? And I, how do you think Megan would feel about being in the 1%? The eco-warrior, the... the common oh my god she, well she would probably like it now although she would like to give a different appearance she's one of you and she can she's one of the people and blah 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 no she she would probably like being in the one percent i would think he should just be quiet about carbon and just cut it out this guy says 
Paparazzi images shot last week showed Harry and Meghan driving around L.A. in a Cadillac Escalade SUV. Baker, who lost his seat in Britain's Parliament in 2015, also said the choice of vehicle would increase carbon footprint, pointing out it has a fuel efficiency of 14 miles per gallon. He calculated the average average British car would run at 48 miles per gallon and also said the 24,500 square foot Beverly Hills mansion where they are currently squatting would likely not be environmentally efficient. I certainly don't think it would be. I've seen a picture of the roof of it. I think we all have. And it looks like there are about 20 AC units on top of it. How much energy would that consume? A whole lot for the eco-warriors. Baker, author of Royal Book and What Do You Do, told Newsweek they make themselves look hypocritical and they damage the case on climate change because people in Britain don't like being lectured to by people who don't practice what they preach. So it's don't do as we do, do as we say with these two. They, they don't practice anything that they preach. They're the biggest hypocrites in the world. He said Prince Charles was also vulnerable to allegations of hypocrisy on the environment and Prince William on wildlife preservations. It's not just Harry, it's also his dad. His dad turned up to see Greta Thunberg in an electric Jaguar, but what wasn't then known was that he had taken three private jets in the previous 11 days when he went to give a lecture about cutting aircraft emissions in Cambridge. He went by private helicopter from London. They just don't seem to realize what they've been doing or be conscious of their own actions. The last uh, page of this, it was just a short snippet. I accidentally deleted it, but it talked about William and his wildlife preservation hypocrisy, and it said that he was out hunting and then spoke at a wildlife preservation event two days later. So that's all, but I'll link it below. You can go check it out if you would like. A few comments from the last video that I posted. Oh my goodness, it has been such a long day, I can't even remember what the video was about. Oh wow, uh, but it said, I was led to believe that their wax fear, Gil Gillian said this, I was led to believe that their wax figures have been removed from Madame Tussauds in January. M.M. is a phony social climber and likes to exaggerate in everything she says. And I responded, I don't know when the picture was taken. I just saw it for the first time a couple of days ago. If you guys don't know the picture I'm talking about, let me show it to you. Here we go. Uh, oh, yes, it was about Megan's plan exposed. Here we go. That's what the video was. It was the Wax Museum, and Beyonce was next to Harry and Meghan. But guess who's not wearing the crown? Not Harry and Meghan. So let's go back. Where were we? The government study. <laughs> All right. That was the first comment. Yes. So Tiger said, right? Oh, yes. Okay, so Tiger said, fun fact, the voices in Megan's head tell her there is a publicity, but there is none. I, I was, I'm just being extra careful. I made this video earlier today, and YouTube didn't let me monetize it, and I just have to water things down so much, everybody. It's, mm, mm, mm. So, Shinoi said... They do not deserve to be next to Queen Bee. Just put the statues outside on the hottest day. Mzilic says, M.M. is teaching young girls. Great example. Hmm, the best example. Megan Carter says, Hey, Megan, no one cares about your noise. P.S. Cher called and she wants her wig back. She's talking about the... the hair that Megan had at the while she was doing the girl up speech. She did kind of look like Cher with yeah, absolutely. You know, I saw I saw Cher in concert uh about uh, what was it? 2 years ago, just over 2 years ago. It was it was amazing. 
54321 said, Also looking like a maid, hair to the waist, a maid at her best. All right, everyone. What have we learned today, you guys? Number one, do as I say, not as I do, is the slogan for Meg's new environmental charity. Second thing we learned, lip service will be the name of Mooching Meg's new makeup line. The third thing we learned, everybody, the closest half-wit Harry gets to green is when he looks at his wellies. Number four, Ms. Markle Sparkle is being tormented by the voices in her head telling her outrageous fibs that she's beautiful, talented, kind, benevolent, even that she's Diana 2.0. Oh, no. Number five, after complaining their wax figures were being overshadowed by bays, the wax harkles were moved someplace more befitting their status, a trash pile in the hot sun. Sixth thing we learned, Smegs believes she is a wonderful example for the next generation, a wonderful example of what not to do. The seventh thing we learned, we know that Meg steals others' words, but now she has resorted to stealing their hair as she appears to have stolen Cher's quaff in her girl up speech. Number eight, the only maid that Megzi has the qualifications to be is a naughty French maid who doesn't do any actual cleaning but comes over for an entirely different purpose. Now, everyone, I had to do a little investigating on this, and I was able to come up with the ad for Megan's French maid service, and it, it's quite something. Let's see it. Oh, see, Megsy's maid service. The only maid service where you feel dirtier when the maid leaves than before she arrived. All right, everyone. Well, I'll be sure to call her to come over and...